hello let's do the top uh, I've already put the belt in for reference so this character is a warrior and that means that she's gonna have a lot of aggressive animations and just to show you um, we're gonna be seeing her from the back most of the time and there is a lot of swinging that she's going to be doing uh, in her various attacks so this kind of, uh, of rotation is not going to be unusual and you can see that the back looks pretty good if we switch over into Z mode um, you can see that it's hard to tell if you're not used to it because the front is also there but you can see that by and large these are becoming diamonds but they're not really aggressively diamond shaped yet and that's a good sign the more diamond shape the faces become the worse it is for animations and here in the front we have a lot of banding we've got banding here we've got banding here and here um, the front is not nearly as resilient and you end up with a lot of compression uh, a lot of diamond shaped stuff and this is especially true once you start to bring the arm into play and we move the arm forward like this um, and you end up with really really stark uh, wrinkles and such but the back still looks good moreover if we were to bring the arm back let's say that she's doing some kind of uh, preparing for a big swing here if we bring the arm back you can see that we get this just this really aggressively nasty um, uh, set of bands that don't don't look right so our animations they look okay for the body of the back but they start to fail at around the shoulder and that works on the front too they fail from on the front of the shoulder as well um, so what we're going to end up doing is we're going to be cloning a lot of the body to make our tunic but we're also going to be retrofitting it to hide the weaknesses in our mesh so in this case this is uh, let's go ahead and hide this I don't really need to uh, see it all the time so in this case uh, what we need is primarily the flat mesh the uh, the complex topology here here uh, and here these are not going to be of any importance to us. Let's go ahead and grab what we need of the mesh, which we'll just say is something like this. And that will do. Um, we've got a little bit of extra stuff, but that's not really going to matter. Let's just deselect some of this neck. We don't need so much neck. That'll do. And now we're going to shift D to duplicate it, and then P to push it into its own object. So now we have this. We're going to change the material just so we can see it. And uh, we're going to go in and edit it until it looks more like a tunic. And that means that we're going to get rid of all of the uh, complex topology we don't need, starting with the left half of the mesh. And then we'll turn on a mirror modifier. There you go. So you can see that the mesh is not perfectly balanced um, in terms of floating point errors, but who who cares? All right. So now we have uh, some complex topology we'd like to get rid of. We really don't need these guys, so they can go. And that means that we can bring this. Uh, let's let's go ahead and just disable the portional editing for the moment. Bring it over here and fill in that portion of the mesh, which will give us a little bit better um, uh, look to our tunic. We don't need our tunic to have a belly button. We also don't need our tunic to have nipples. So let's go ahead and get rid of this part. And of course the remnants. And we can fill this in in the exact same way by simply marching across using this um, this here. I don't know exactly how many faces we're going to want, so I'm going to pull this up like this, and then I'm going to connect it on the far side like this. And we can adjust this to be the exact shape we're going to want. We're going to be deleting the mesh underneath this body, uh, underneath the tunic, so we don't have to worry about pop through at all. We just have to worry about having the right shape.
Oh, is that not connected properly? Eh, figures. I was wondering why it was looking so awful. And the answer is, I screwed it up. There we are, that's better. Here we go. So this is going to be our topology for the chest, and it's going to make it a little bit less aggressive uh, when it comes to having the um, uh, all of the contours there. Uh, we don't need all the contours because it's not going to be form fitting. Now, as you can as you can see, uh, we have this issue where we are short on the bottom. We don't have enough. Uh, faces down here to actually fill there and on the top we actually have the right number so if we were to fill in the faces here we would find that we have very very close to the right number of faces as close as we can get and that means that the top half and the bottom half have a different number of faces and that's kind of obnoxious isn't it well that's because there was a lot of topology in here and we've just deleted most of it but what we can do is we can delete uh, all of this stuff um, and then when we do that we can adjust it just a little bit like so and that should bring it in a little bit more evenly but we have too many here so delete this and then when we fill in let's just go ahead and fill in and we'll shape it when we're done editing topology like this is a great way to learn topology um, so if you are uh, new to the topology game, this is not a bad way to get started. Hacking random pieces out of a topology to change their shape is pretty much how you uh, figure things out. So here we do have a situation where we could fill this in with a quad, but that would actually be the wrong call um, because we do need a little bit more density in this area. So our two choices are to bring this up or to cut this in half. Uh, and in this case, I think bringing it up is the better option. And then we can fill this in. Now this is not a, a continuous loop here. We have an issue where we do have a uh, an extra loop that is kind of screwing us up a little bit. If we delete this loop, what we end up with is an identical situation on both sides here where we've got one triangle and one triangle. Now it's up to you whether or not you think that's bad or good, but uh, in the end what we're looking at here is uh, a pole that hasn't been formed correctly for us, and that's no surprise. We're kind of randomly hacking things away, so of course we're going to end up with things that we didn't expect. But if we delete these edges here, we can actually see what's going on a lot clearer. we're dealing with a rip. So here, now that we've sealed up the rip, we've filled in all the pieces that we need uh, to have filled in, and it's more or less correct. We've got this loop running across the top, and then we've got a series of loops running across the side, and we've got a pole right here. And that is probably plenty good for our needs. Obviously the shape is not very good at the moment, um, because we have this uh, uh, really distorted shape that depends on the basic topology of the rest of the chest and then simplifies the uh, the breast. Um, we also can fix that using our sculpt mode. Yay! Now, there's a lot of ways to try and use sculpt mode to fix this sort of thing. Um, grab is often quite useful and you can smooth it and all sorts of stuff but this is actually uh, premature because we don't want to do it before we've deleted the body or at least hidden the body we can see the body through it but pop through that's going to influence us too much influence us too much so let's go ahead and continue on with our um, mesh creation so our mesh actually has a scoop neck with a bound up front. So to do that we need to make this into more of a scoop neck and our two basic options are to hack away pieces of the loop or to try and make the loop behave. Um, we can in fact see exactly where this is going to go by drawing it using some kind of ink pen or something but uh, it's not going to end up working out very well 
because it's going to cut across all sorts of loops. We've got a pole right here, and this pole is probably going to be um, the core of our efforts. A pole simply means that it's not there. Are, there's not rather than only you know one, two, three, four. It's one, two, three, four, five, uh, and that means that the mesh is coming together in a complicated way. Uh, and we're we're looking at a pole here, and we're also looking at trimming away all of this stuff on the side. So in the end, if we look at where our poles are, we've only got two. We've got this pole here, and we've got this pole here. This pole is a pole because it only has three. So if we think of it like that, then we can just go in and kill everything up here, and there's no shame in that at all. If we delete absolutely everything from pole to pole, make sure we didn't catch anything on the back there, and then just delete it. We end up with a much more manageable front. And in the back, we have a pole here, as you can see. So if we were to delete everything outside of that pole, uh, we would be able to start thinking about how this is supposed to look um, from our perspective. And that means that we do have this issue down here, which we'll get to in the long run, but we can alleviate it to a large extent by deleting these verts here. And we're basically cutting away all the verts we don't need. There we are. That looks pretty decent. And we can bring this up, fill this in, and we've erased that pull. And what we see here is we've got a, uh, a shirt that wraps around the edge. So we can create another pull here by simply extending this part over and filling in this quad. And this gives us a pretty decent edge to work with. And if we were to bring this down, if I look at this from the front here, I can tilt this whole the whole camera down like this. And that means that as I extend, it won't be punching into the body quite as bad. So you can use this to help you work on your um, on your extensions, because Blender doesn't have a very easy snap to. There's a couple of libraries that can help you do snap to using Blender, but by default they, they are just awful. Oh, see, I just screwed that up. Oh yeah. So there's our scoop neck. And then at the bottom, this becomes much more compressed like this, because they connect up here like so. And this gives us a scoop neck. Now we could be using uh, some um, shrink wrap, but since we're working so close to the body already, it's not really that important. Uh, what we're worried about now is how we're going to get this area to behave. So to figure that out, I'm going to go ahead and create this hem. Uh, and this hem is going to wrap around the shoulder and hide a lot of the shoulders uh, deformations because it's difficult to get the body to look right it's a continuous mesh but if you have two discontinuous meshes you can use them to support each other and you can hide the weaknesses of one with the other uh, and to call the shoulder a weakness it's not their fault that it's a weakness it's not a fault uh, of the mesh it's just that Fundamentally speaking, shoulders are weaknesses. They are not very easy. And then we can just merge. This gives us a kind of square look to our shape here. And we can blunt that a little bit by just shaping this down a little bit. But in the end, we are actually looking for a kind of squarish cut. This is supposed to be a peasant's uh, garb. It's not supposed to look good. It's supposed to look uh, slightly shabby. And that's not such a bad thing to have for a shabby coat or a shabby tunic. There we go. So this is going to be a square hem. And then we have to figure out how to fill in here. And we're definitely going to need a pole. The question is what we're going to do, where we're going to turn, uh, what we're going to create. First off, I'm going to add in another unit here. And I'm also going to go ahead and split, because we are going to have to split, and we might as well do it now before we get too distracted. So how far down does the neck go? That should be about right.
All right, now the split mm, was a little bit, uh, it's not really important, but it's a little bit important to understanding what we're going to plan on doing. The basic way to make loops work is to fold them back on themselves in the way that you'd like them to work. Uh, you can see that across this edge we actually have a fairly typical matched system and we can match it up perfectly if we'd like. The problem is that as it gets down uh, it gets wider and wider and wider and we do need to keep, to keep most of our tiles as square as possible, most of our faces as square as possible. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a loop of these lines here. And this will fold this, uh, this loop back in on itself and we can use that as a, uh, a way to add complexity without adding in any, any bad loops. Uh, but of course we do want it to be as square as possible. So, well, let's go ahead and not do it that way. I was thinking about it. That's a way that works if you're doing certain things, but I don't think this is going to work. I think what we're going to have to do is start with filling this in. Uh, sorry, I, I haven't decided exactly where the pole is going to go yet, but it's easy enough to fill these in and we can immediately see uh, that we're going to need a lot more space here. One of the things we can do is add in a cut here, and you can see how that goes around the back of the neck, so it's not as aggressive as it might otherwise seem. Um, and when we are like this, we can pull this cut out above the chest so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, but we still have too much width here. We really need to add in uh, some some complexity. So if we were to bring this in, you can see that we have uh, an extra loop, an extra edge here, and that's what I was trying to fix before. So if we were to draw a cut from here to here, this would be a pole, a five-point pole, and this wouldn't quite fit with what we need to do because we actually have an entire loop that needs to be cut back out. We need we need two five-point poles, or we need a five-point pole, and a, or we need a six-point pole, or there's any number of complex things we could try and do with this. But it can be a mistake to try and raise the complexity arbitrarily to fit whatever you've already got. It might be better if we think of this uh, in terms of the complexity we need at the top. So if we were to cut like this, this would give us more or less, less the complexity we need. It might be a little bit low, but it's more or less correct. And then if we look at how this works as we come down, oh, I just copied one. We can see that we're getting really, really sparse over here on the side. Um, that is not going to work. Come on. There we are. We're getting really, really sparse here on the side. Uh, we need a lot more density over here. So we've got one pole here, and we can put another pole, say, here. Now, normally I would be taking a lot more care with where I exactly am putting my poles, but in this case, what we're doing is uh, the front of the shirt, and we're never going to see the front of the shirt in any extravagant animations, or very rarely. Most of the time, the front of the shirt is going to be um, just seen when we're in a cutscene or we're looking at our character just by moving the camera around, and she won't be in any kind of violent animation. So we can add in a series of poles, and that while that isn't ideal in terms of animation, it is pretty easy to see what we did, and therefore it can be a valuable way to do things. Now in terms of matching things up, we should now have pretty close to the right amount. Let's take a look. That is the right amount. They are offset awkwardly, but it is the right amount, and that is good enough. So now when we look at it, we've got one over here, we've got two over here. How do we want to deal with that? Well, this loop is actually important to us because it's a hem loop. We're going to be building that into a hem. So in order to make this work, uh, the best thing we can do is actually either remove these guys or um, bind them down. So if we were to remove them, we can just delete these verts here and then reattach. Oop. And that seems to work fine. I don't think there's any need to do anything more complex. And we can just add a loop here. There we go. Now we have the outline of our um, uh, of the upper part of our tunic. 
We're at 20 minutes already. These uh, do take a while to build, unfortunately. Um, this is this is uh, this is how modeling is. Uh, it's never quite as fast as you might hope it's going to be, especially if you're doing medium poly modeling and you have to pay uh, excruciating attention to details like um, uh, like whether or not a um, a uh, thing animates properly. So here we have the lower part of the mesh, but we do have this issue because uh, we can see the inside of the back or the front, and that's going to end up being invisible due to the way it works. We're going to have to remember that and deal with it at the end, but we don't need to deal with it now. What we would like to deal with now is we've got this uh, rather aggressive spine, and there's no reason for us to leave that in place. Let's go ahead and pull that spine out to give us a little bit more of a realistic look. That's slightly better, yeah. So we're also going to put a hem here because we're going we're to want a hem there as well. Now in the next episode we'll finish this off and we'll finish it off um, probably going to take another 20 minutes. Uh, sorry this took so long, but I did want to show you the nitty-gritty details of how you might have to do clothes. Um, one of the things you'll notice is that we have a weird fold here. We can deal with all that stuff in the next couple of episodes. We're not too worried about exactly how it falls at the moment. For example, it's not going to be anywhere near this tight. Um, but in the next episode, we will make this uh, more correct. We will finish it off, we will uh, UV map it, we'll do all of that.